today's surprise ingredient, Mountain Dew. You probably didn't think you could put these in potatoes, did you? But I'm fixing to show you how, and oh folks, they oh so tasty with some jalapeno garlic. Finish it off with some Parmesan cheese. Come on, cause we're drinking a lot of Mountain Dew today. Hey, thank y'all, and in this episode, what are we doing? Oh, that's full. We're gonna rewind, go back in time to visit an old classic, one of my most favorite recipes ever. You might have heard of it, sparkling taters, but we revamping, we rescheduling, we are getting after it. But hey, remember, we are still in our two million subscriber celebration. Yes, we are, and we have teamed up with the good folks at Ariat. And whoo we don't I look sharp, don't I look good. They boots is superior, comfortable. They are, that is a big word for me, but they always keep me looking sharp, they do. And the good folks there have decided that they would help us with the giveaway and give away two $100 gift certificates. Whoa, but y'all know how it works. You gotta stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how to enter. Remember I told you we was going back in time for this recipe? Let me see, let me do it, do it. August 2014. That's when do we the, first. Do that back in time war pans. The what? You know, the. That's like a. Woo -doo, woo -doo. Woo -doo, woo -doo. <laughs> I have never in my life, not even on Star Trek, did I see anything like that. But that's when we first put this video out on YouTube. And it was, hey, an old classic dish of mine that I come up with on ranches so many years ago due to I was running out of supplies in the snowstorm in the Peladura Canyon and I had to come up with something to cook. I did. I looked over there under the table. One of them cowboys had a soda pop over there that he was using to mix a cocktail at night. Yes, he was. And I'm thinking, it says Sprite. Can you cook with it? I don't know, but I was going to find out. Folks, that thing become an instant hit. Them cowboys wanted that for three meals a day, and we keep making it still today. But would I tell you, revamping, rechanging, creating a whole new name with a very special secret ingredient. And what is it? yippee i and it's lovely today at good old Mountain Dew. Yeah, y'all remember that commercial? Yeah, you know, that old hillbilly guy. He just got that jug, turned it up, and I mean the cork blew off of it, shot a hole in his hat. That's what Mountain Dew will do for you. It's gonna jazz these taters up something special, it is. The Russet, he is the one that has come forward today to show you how to make the sparkling hillbilly potatoes. Yes, he is. Why a Russet? Because he holds up really well. He's a potato that if you cut him right, leave the peeling on there, he will keep his shape as we make this dish. Got me some water in the bowl. Got my russets over here. Now, it is really important that you leave the skin on the potato, and I want you to try to get that measurement right there. How many times have we made this dish? There is no telling. I mean, this is a crowd favorite anywhere we go. So the water, the reason is, sure, a lot of dust in Oklahoma, we're gonna get some of it washed off, but it's gonna help take a little starch out of them potatoes too, which is gonna help them as they cook along. So while them are sitting there just waiting for the star attraction, we're gonna have a Dutch oven over here and we're gonna cut up some bacon. Let me get some. Now, I'm gonna read on the sack here. It says 1.5 pound. Now, Shan and the Beagle and Duke have been in this sack already. <laughs> and y'all be thinking like, that's a lot of bacon, folks. Remember what the cowboy has always told you? You can never have too much bacon, too much cheese, or too many jalapenos. Now, get your knife good and sharp. I need you just to cut that bacon about like so. Just run it across there where it's about that thick. That's all you gotta do. Always, even in medieval times, they had someone to test their food to make sure that the food was good. I have such subject. His name is Loyal Beagle. Is the bacon okay? He says the bacon is fine. So, 12 inch Dutch oven over here, I forgot to mention. This is a one pot meal. That way you ain't gotta be dirtying up too much dishes. So we're going right over here to the, whoa, my favorite sound in the world is what? A sizzle. Let her go to cooking. We're gonna cook it about three fourths of the way through. While that's just sitting there minding its own business, let's go back over here and let's take us one yellow onion, a Vidalia it is. I, 
prefer that because of the sweetness it sort of brings to the dish. Leave the root end on there, okay? Slicer pretty well, oh, I'd say within a quarter of an inch to the bottom. Turn it around here, that way you don't be cutting your fingers off. And then I want you to go back to the outside edge here, come across again, turn it around. You might want to check out our Better Than Outback's Bloomin' Onion video because, folks, we done carved up some rose petals on that deal we did. Now we just slice her and look what we got, <laughs> diced onion. Handy trick. It is a very good trick, the magical fruit. Y'all knew this recipe was going to have to have them, didn't you? You can take the seeds and the membrane out of there if you wish. And then we're gonna go back and automatic dice them. We are halfway done, we are, with the bacon. Now it's time to add the onions and the sweet oil jalapenos. We're just gonna cook that maybe three or four more minutes till the onions forget to get a little tender. You could take like a flour tortilla right now and just go to town with that or maybe throw it over some ice cream, be good enough for me. Your potatoes that you have cut up you need to drain the water off of. Not in the kitchen floor. <laughs> Make sure you're in an outside environment, okay? Because folks, it doesn't go well, it doesn't. Now, I'm gonna add these in there a little at a time because I wanna make sure that everybody gets some of that good bacon up on them and some of that bacon crease. And it's getting breezy in the kitchen, Shen. I like a one pot meal, I do. Everybody's getting some love from that bacon and jalapeno. Mm, mm, mm. When I told you we did that video in 2014, you might have seen it somewhere else too. Like in 2015, there was this great cookbook come out called A Taste of Cowboy. It's right there. I know that guy on the cover. It has got this recipe in it, folks, and so many more. But don't forget too our other cookbook, Faith, Family, and the Feast. So everybody is incorporated well now. Now, a long time ago, I just used them dried minced garlics and just throwed them in there. But no, I told you we was revamping and changing we are. So I got me some of them elephant ear garlic and we're going to put... What's the difference between elephant ear and the regular? Well, sort of looks like an elephant ear, okay? And it is a whole lot bigger. To me, I like the flavor even better. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a viewer out there that's going to break this down for us and tell us the exact reason why one is one and one is the other. Big says, I am just ready for some bacon to fall out of there. Give it another mixing, toss it really good. I mean, don't that look good to you, Shen? I mean, th this is a fine looking creation that the cowboy is making right here. And it has served, I don't know how many cowboys on ranches. It was usually a meal that we'd break out on the first night sometimes because you want to sort of give them that wow factor, you know, even out there in the middle of nowhere. They thought they'd went to the Holiday Inn and eaten at the buffet every day. Mm-hmm. So the Holiday Inn have a buffet? Well, sometimes if you get lucky, they do. <laughs> well, we know what's coming next, folks. That good old Mountain Dew. So what what is this going to change in flavor-wise in the Sprite? Well, this? there to me is a little more citrus in this than there is just a regular lemon-lime soda pop. And then this has some of that added octane to it that kicks it on up there to where you can jump higher, run faster, sort of like that kid tennis shoe commercial. Remember them? Folks, you just, and you just want to pour this around until you see, see how that's come up about halfway in this Dutch oven over here? And then make sure. Now, if you're cooking this in the house, Go ahead and preheat that oven, and you're gonna cover this as you cook it in the house. But one thing that I'm gonna show you when we're cooking, you don't wanna run out of liquid in this. You may have to bring some more, so buy the Mondo size bottle. Let's get it mixed one more time. You know what's next, don't you? Some of that original seasoning, because why? It's sort of got a lemon citrus base to it as well, and we need to put it in there. Now the wind is blowing out of the southwest at 37 miles an hour today, so we're gonna sprinkle no. Wait, oh, nearly hit it. <laughs> We're getting closer. It is one of them deals where you can, I ain't for sure if we're going to get it in there or not. Give it a stirring. We'll season one more time as it begins to cook. And if y'all go with me, I'll show you something right over here at this little fire. Fixing to get time to put some coals on the Dutch oven. But y'all haven't seen this little apparatus here before? 
Now, a lot of you be saying, I can't be cooking like you because I don't have a Bertha to drag coals out of. You got a wash tub, you got a wheelbarrow, you got maybe an old feed trough that you can use, something like that. You can get that hardwood lump in there, which is just regular old wood that's been cooked and starved for oxygen and then sacked up and sent to you. Now, you can't just set that right on some bare concrete or in your grass, it's gonna blister it pretty bad. So underneath, I have three bricks to hold that wash tub up off the ground. What do we got? We got a trivet right over here, a tall one. We're gonna put coals around the outside edge, coals around the top, go to cooking. Fired up and hot it is, and with that wind blowing, folks, we have a microwave conditions today, we do. Now, I'm using a tall trivet mostly because that wind is probably 30 miles an hour today and things are gonna cook pretty quick, or you're even apt to burn something. But this is a little easier because this is sort of like one of them dishes that you can check on. You can also add more liquid and you can stir it on occasion. This is not like we're baking bread or cornbread, something like that. Now I have a good line of coals around the outside edge of the Dutch oven and a good layer on top. Now y'all have seen me use that shovel I got at the wagon that's got all them holes in it to sift that ash out. You ain't got one of them, but you got a fireplace shovel, even a good set of gloves and some long tongs you can put coals on a dutch oven with them you can make sure that you don't have the ash in the shovel when you start because ash will not cook it will insulate and keep things from cooking i know y'all be thinking they spent a lot of episodes under the barn. Well, there has, but there is a reason for that. You know, we have a wagon. Y'all ain't seen here much. And folks, I'm gonna just tell you right now, the wagon is in a lot of pieces. I'm gonna show you right here at Shanford. This is what the wagon looks like now. Just a chassis and sort of the outline of what might happen. Now, we've been doing some periodic maintenance since 1991, but folks, it was time for a complete overhaul. I mean, it ain't like you can take it down there to AutoZone and say, hey, would you change oil and lube the tires for me right quick because something's happening here. We went back and stripped off all the paint, going back with a more traditional old Studebaker color, new sideboards because, oh, they was warped so bad, new floorboards throughout. Folks, it takes a while. There will be an upcoming video on all this restoration process, but hey, there's a lot of parts on a wagon and we're gonna put them back in the right spot. Goodness, I mean, when you lifted the lid off that pot, did y'all see that little bubbling simmering going on there and the flavors that just jumped out of there? They make, they make you want to jump up on top of the barn and do like a, I mean, some kind of happy dance up there they will. But folks, I'm gonna tell you, and I can't stress this enough, do not overcook them. Just cook them where that spoon will just barely pierce them to where they keep their shape because they're gonna look so much better and stand up even longer. So make sure, do not overcook. And then you see me right there at the last when we drug them out on the plate, it was wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Throw some Parmesan cheese on there and I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. I'm gonna take a bite of these Mountain Dew hillbilly potatoes. Mm, got some of that there. All the secret ingredients is right there on that one bite. Praise the Lord, pass the biscuits and give me some of them more Mountain Dew hillbilly potatoes. We're gonna do the hoedown. Happy, happy, happy. Whoa, here we go. Got that Mountain Dew shake. Woo, buddy, I be liking me some Mountain Dew. It changed them potatoes so much from when we used to do it with the Sprite. Folks, you get really a better caramelization out of here because that Mountain Dew brings out so much more flavor. It's sweeter too. Yes, it is so good it is. But we did have help and we can't feed them none of this dish cause it's got, say says, but I like potatoes. So we have treats. There you go, Lulu. She says, that's not what you was cooking. The little mage, the sweet little beagle. Here comes Duke. Duker, you're always coming in a little late to the party but you never miss out on eating. Here you go, bud. Thank you so much. Duke says, that's not beef. That's not bacon. Ooh-wee. 
That is some fine dining. I am sure glad that we brought back this old classic dish and changed it up a little, made it even look better than what it was. And speaking of looking better than what I always do, that's because of the good folks at Ariat. And don't forget, they're giving away two $100 gift certificates to two lucky winners, and Sade's gonna help pick them. She is, yes she is. And how do you enter this? What I want you to do is Name me one more ingredient that you think would really top this off even better. Now don't get crazy on me and say, hey, a scoop of ice cream. I want you to do some thinking and tell me what you really think would elevate this dish one more step. And how do you enter? Leave me a comment down there below. Tell me what it is. I want to know exactly what you'd put in this dish. And Sadie, she'll pick out the two winners she will for two $100 gift certificates. And I want to thank the people at Ariat for always helping us out and always keeping me looking so good. Well, we want to thank y'all for stopping by and taking time out of your busy day to watch our videos. Me and Shan, we never take it for granted, and you know that we consider you family. We do, each and every one of you. And remember, always be looking at that website because there's going to be some upcoming events that you can tend to. We'll be in Lebanon, Missouri, not too far along. I think it is Memorial Day weekend, Wagons for Warriors. Hey, it's a great cause. I'd like to see y'all up there, so be out sure and check them out. But as always, I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept old Gloria flying back there. And remember, no matter what you're facing in life, it ain't no step for a stepper. You just keep on stepping. Now come on in here. I will to give you a great big old hug. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the Mountain Dew Hillbilly Tater Trail. <laughs> what do you got, Lou? Lou. Oh, it's a lid to a bottle. The wind is blowing, so to keep the tripod from blowing over, we had MacGyverisms again today. So, folks, you always got to be prepared for Mother Nature here. This is not a stand and stir cook. This is a, you gonna cook in every condition known to mankind. So if you like these old classic cowboy specials, I mean, they are good, they are. You might wanna check out one that was really a cowboy favorite from, hey, for a long, long time. What was it? upside down pizza. I mean, they'll lick the pan clean. But another one always was what? Biscuits and sausage gravy. Be sure and check them both out. The classics they are.